It's all about helping others, right? It's part of the law of the universe. You help others get what they want, by default, the universe is going to give you what you want, right? You have to give in order to receive. You got to provide the value. You're only going to get paid for the value that you provide and the value that you're able to duplicate. Remember that you got to duplicate it. You can't know all the sauce. You can't know everything. Everybody's, everybody has to know everything. That makes sense. Everybody's a boss. Everybody got to have the same inf information to reach Chairman 100, right? Because, like, if you're on this call right now and you're not trying to make a million dollars, you're on the wrong call. Your goal is to make a min uh, like a M, a million, right? Seven figures, right? One, six zeros, right? You want your bank account to look like this when you log into your savings, at least. You, know, you got a, a light mail or a rainy day. Right? You can't think like other people because you guys are already investing, right? Understand where you're, where you're at right now. You guys are already trading and investing. Right? You guys took that leap from 96% of people, right? 96% of people, oops, 96% of people trade time for money, All right? You guys already are, all right? That is the go. All right, you guys should be able to hear me now. All right, I like that. Billy, Billy. One, two. All right, so 96% of the people trade it. Uh -huh. okay, so now, um, you know, that sounds not going to be crazy. 96% of people trade their time for money. All right, so you guys are already at the 3% because 3% of people. Trade money or money. You guys are already trading, right? 1% of people, all right, and let me put it to you in this version because one percent of people multiply their time and money, all right? With network marketing, you're able to multiply and build businesses around the world because you're like, understand what you have, right? You have a product that you can plug random people to, right? Strangers, you're plugging people because people never done this. People never heard of this. People don't even know this exists, right? You guys, all right, think about it like this. This, 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 <laughs> this is what I say all the time. If I would have never got started, none of you guys would be on this call. Imagine how many people indirectly would have not been introduced to Forex if I would have never taken that leap of faith, right? You mean something. You are a chairman already. You have to know that. You gotta get uncomfortable. And you gotta, you wanna make money you never had, you gotta do things you, you never done. You gotta do these events, you gotta speak in front of people. You gotta go talk to strangers. Right? Because strangers will believe in you more than your own friends and family. Your friends and family have a hard time seeing where you're trying to go because they are too busy at, uh, looking at you from who you were. Right? You're trying to grow out of that. The only way you're going to grow out of it is you got to go through what you go You got to grow through what you go through. Yes, there's bumps and rolls, but those bumps and rolls, those every single obstacle you hit in your business, even in trading, is meant to test you to see if you can even handle more money. Can you even handle, like, right now, I want you guys to take a second and think about this, all right? This Friday coming up, you're getting $25,000. What are you going to do with it? Right? Right? You have responsibility, right? You're gonna have to take care of people. You're gonna have to take care of your family. You're gonna have to look out for other people. Like with more money, 
comes more responsibility because now you have you have access to a platform where anybody can make that t- type of money that you make it. Right? Everybody can make this type of money. Doesn't matter. Your goal is chairman, right? Doesn't matter what happens. Right? Your goal is chairman. You're going to hit chairman no matter what. So nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Right? Oh, um, real quick, all right. Take some notes. All right. Um, All right, so habits, right, defines your frequencies. After a lot, actually. All right, your habit defines your frequency, right? Habits and thoughts. Define your frequency, right? Depending what you do every single day, depending how you go out along your day, right? Because, okay, you have a nine to five. Let's say even if you work 40 hours a week, right? You have no excuses because there's a 16. (laughs) I can't believe this. He's 16 years old, right? And he goes to the bathroom to take trades, to trade moves while in school. All right, so there's no reason why you aren't capable of doing what somebody who's not even 18. All right, you guys, a lot of people, like, I, I understand because I've been there, but I've never had somebody tell me, like, yo, listen, you're God, you're God highest form of creation. I just learned that at Chairman 25. All right. You're God highest form of creation. You can do things, you can do anything you put your mind to. You can attract anything that you want to attract in, into your life. All right? You are worth making $100,000 a month. Why can't you make that type of money? All right? You deserve that type of money. Your family needs that type of money. All right, so your thoughts has to be on that level. What, what are you thinking? What is the person on this level thinking? All right, if I tell somebody my goal in the next two to five years, right? If you guys tell anybody, right? I'm going to unmute everybody, right? If you guys tell anybody, yo, my goal by, the, by between two to five years is to make $100,000 a month, what are they going to tell you? <laughs> Everybody, they're gonna call you crazy as a scam. Like, yo, you selling drugs? Put me on. Like, like, like a lot of people would like to get put on it. Like, oh, you selling drugs? Put me on. I'm like, no, bro. Like, drug dealers are selling the wrong product. They're good, you know, they're selling it, but they're selling the wrong product. It's not making them 100K a month. 100K a month where you don't have to worry about anything. You're good. 100K a month, you're good. All right. So, it is. All right, so. I'm not going to talk too much. Jordan, are you on the call? Jordan. Okay, Jordan is not here, so I'll keep going. All right, so. Like, okay, Jordan, just mute it. Drug dealers are entrepreneurs just pushing the wrong product. Like, imagine if they push I, something that actually... Like, the thing, the whole is that 13 just that. 
It's the same thing with my job. There's a lot of great stories, a lot of hard workers. Why can't you work hard on your goals and actually drive towards something? Somebody, there's somebody, I'll make 50k a month. He makes 50 games. He's not even going to understand where I'm coming from. Right? So, Jordan, are you there? I'm going to cover that in a second. I'm, I don't want you to just go ahead and jump in the start. He said just a second? Jordan. Okay, Jordan. I thought I, I'm meeting the wrong person. It's probably because I saw your face on somebody else's thing. Turn your camera on. It is on. <laughs> Got you. Yo, what's up, darling? What's going on, man? How you been? Doing well, man. Let me bring you up. Hold on. Guys, pretty much the next person I'm about to bring up, he's going to go over trading. So make sure you guys have a piece of paper and a pen. This guy already made six figures trading. Right? So if you guys are on that process of trying to compound your account, trying to, trying to pretty much adjust to a new habit and new things that you're going through every single day, this is the person that you want to take notes from. So Jordan, are you on the on the line? Let's get it. Let's get it on. Boom. Yeah, guys, I'm going to go over some trading today. I'm basically going to go over my strategy and kind of the things, uh, trading psychology, entries, risk management, stuff like that. <clears throat> I think it's this screen, right? Yeah, so guys, if you didn't know, I've been uh, in IML for about a year and three months now. It took me about nine, ten months to go full-time, as in I wasn't relying on anything else for income. And the way that happened was, like, I really stuck through it. I see a lot of people, you know, they lose money in their first month or two. Maybe they didn't listen or maybe, you know, whatever happened. They didn't stick through the process. And the thing is, the people that stuck around with me, you guys got to understand, Kyle Prasad, who just commented in the chat, he was actually one of the first people that joined my business. I believe he was one of the first three people in my business. And he stuck around and then kind of see where he is now. Like, he's only 16 years old. Um, but, like, ever since uh, Gold Cup got created, prior to Gold Cup, I was focusing on teacups. You guys know Lasalle Tavares his strategy, teacups, and then uh, they combined with, he combined with Luke Longmire, so I started trading Luke Longmire's strategy for gold. Um, but recently I've been putting a twist on it with um, Zach and Jordan's kind of smart money entries, entering off the one minute stuff like that. But before um, I get into the charts, like I wanna go over really briefly some things you should know before you start trading. Like you need to know what you're trading, um, what is your, there we go, okay. Yeah, so usually like four things, and this is kind of how Luke Longmire, the way he sets up his trading plan, this is what's worked for me really well. And kind of in anything you're doing, it's important to have clarity. Like Darwin says, it's important to have your goals right in front of you. And it's the same way it's important to have your trading plan in front of you. Until you've been doing this for a long time, and you know that by heart, like it's important to see that from a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it's really easy to make stupid mistakes when you're not writing down what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, so first thing is first, I recommend you focus on one pair. That's what's helped me the most. Which pair are you trading? Once you focus on one pair, then you're actually able to understand how it moves. Like now that I've been trading gold only for the last nine months, I know exactly what it's doing at all times. And it doesn't fake me out as much anymore. So which pair are you trading? Know that for yourself. Number two, what time or what session? Um, I prefer to trade a New York session, but of course, with traveling a lot, I've been to over 20 states in the last three, four months. So it's it's kind of difficult to have a specific schedule. So it kind of depends on the week. Um, but just for this example, New York session. Um, number three, also know what is your what is your setup, okay? So meaning, if you trade off of technical analysis, fundamental analysis, you trade with zones, trend lines, stuff like that, make sure you have a, with this, what is the setup? The way you answer this is your confirmation checklist. And I'm about to go over that right now, right after this, and then number four, what is your pit goal? You know, what is your goal for the day? What is your goal for the week? Like, 
Like that's what I was talking about with what, what Darwin was saying with building and in life in general, you got to know where you're going. Cause otherwise if you don't know where you're going, you're just going to be going in a random direction and have no focus. Like it's really important to have your focus in one place so you can actually reach that position. Okay. So per trade, per day, per week, whatever you want to write, write this out for you. Everyone's trading plan is going to be different. Um, of course, you're getting trades sent out to you, signals. There's different apps, Gold Cup, Swipe Trade, Harmonic Scanner. Use those as extra confirmations. Don't just blindly take every trade. If what your pair is gold and then you agree with what they're saying, use that as a confirmation. Don't just blindly take trades. Make sure you're actually understanding what you're trading and why. Okay. So I'm going to get into what, what do I look for in gold because um, recently I've been adjusting my strategy. I actually have always been trading off zones, no trend lines, no Fibonacci, no indicators, always trading off zones. But just recently I've made a change and that's what am I entering off of? And I'm actually entering off the one minute, usually sometimes on the five minute. So it's very simple. Just know, like be very patient because sometimes you may not get a trade every day. You may not get a trade every week, but if you're looking for one specific thing, you know, your setup. So basically I have zones marked where major confluence is major points of interest so for example like on gold this is a low that was made you guys see look at multiple rejections in the same spot right multiple rejections so now what i would look for with that for this zone if price impulsively moves down to it i'll be looking for entry but the thing is if there's consolidation before the move there's no money behind it basically from, from learning from Gustavo and learning from uh, Jordan Morgan and, and Zach Ogin, basically for a big move to be made, there needs to be money behind it. So I've kind of used that and I put my own twist on it. So basically a trade I took this morning, I didn't call it out. It actually happened a little bit too fast. I'm just going to show you an example. I think it's actually right here, no, right here. So like I said, I have major zones already marked, right? So what I'm looking for is an impulsive move into that zone and a sharp rejection on the one minute or the five minute. So to really break this down for you, actually, let me do this on a fresh chart so it makes more sense. Okay, so with gold, I'm on New York session, New York open right there, uh, right there on that candle. Okay, oh, it's, it's black. That's why you can see it. I bet. So since I trade New York, once New York session opens, that's what I'm looking for, right? So with, with New York opening, my zones would have been here and around here where all these wicks are. So I'm not looking to enter when it's in between. So like Luke Longmire likes to say it, don't trade in the ocean. Make sure you're trading at the beach. Like these are the areas where you want to be looking for trades. If price is in between, you don't want to be looking to enter. So I like to let a move happen early in New York because most of the time, the first 15, 30 minutes, even the first hour or two into the market opening, and that goes with any session, the first hour or two of the market opening is basically going to give you either a false move or just like a fake out. So basically what it did was it started dropping. So the only thing I was looking for was I type any type of rejection in this area because this is previous structure over here. So when it came down to it, I was looking to enter on the five minute. Okay. So what happened was New York session opened right here. It gave a sharp move, like a hundred pips impulsively down. And then it gave you this hammer candle right here. And this is what I entered off of. If you guys see, if you guys are familiar with candlestick patterns, if you're not, make sure you download Japanese candlestick patterns, the app, and then make sure when you're looking for these impulsive moves down into the rejection, look at how many pips is the wick. I usually want it to be over 10, especially the 15 plus. I'm definitely entering off that every time. So this one right here was 13 pips. The key to this strategy is really just to not enter on in consolidation. Wait for a move to happen and then wait for a sharp rejection because what that tells me is the banks were moving the market just so they could move the market. So really what, what does that mean exactly? So when the banks move the market, basically the main uh, contributors in the forex market is the banks, right? So if there's a big candle, that means the banks are behind pretty much. Uh, 
So what happened was when they moved the market, they're going either for the break even or they're going for the stop loss. In this case, it went for the break even to people that were already in buys. This chart's not loading, but um, let me see if this is a different chart. Yeah, so he gave a sharp move.